on Rosh Hashanah of year 1657. Noah opened the Teva, but he realized he can't yet get out because although the water receded, the ground was all filled with boiling hot mud. Finally, Noah and his family were able to leave the Teva on Chavzayin Cheshvan, which if you realize is 11 days after the lunar year. We said the Mabul started on Yud Zayin Cheshvan in the previous year. Why the extra 11 days? Because Hashem made the Mabul exactly a year in solar days that has 365 days of the year. Hashem purposely did this because the Dora Mabul, the generation of the flood, specifically wanted to make the sun their God, saying Hashem can't control the sun. So Hashem specifically made it surrounding the solar year. The corpses were all wiped away to a place called Shin'ar. Many hot springs still remain today in the world, and these hot springs are remnants of the water that fell from the Mabu. We know a lot of these hot springs today have healing properties. Hashem wanted to show that even though he punished with the hot water, it could still bring refuah. That Hashem, whatever his word is, goes. And the same thing he could punish with, he could reward with. As well. The question is asked why did Hashem tell Noah to build a teva? Couldn't he have just sent Noah and his family to Eretz Israel if he wanted them to be saved? Well, first, we did say that those living in Eretz Israel did perish even though there was no flood because it was so hot from the water, the people in Eretz Israel died from the extreme heat, almost like they were baked in an oven. But still, Hashem wanted Noah to build a teva, so for the duration of the building, people would come back in Teshuvah. Also, Hashem wanted to tell Noah, when there's a calamity, stay indoors, stay in the teva, because when there's a plague out there, the Satan is out there, not distinguishing between good and bad. So stay indoors, stay home, cooped up, that's the best thing for you to do during these times. Finally, Hashem tells Noah, even though, practically speaking, Noah was able to go off the ark, he waited for Hashem's command to go off the ark. Hashem commanded Noah, in which Noah realized, if Hashem commanded me to keep seven animals from the kosher animals, he obviously meant it for a purpose to give sacrifices towards him. So Noah went and gave korbanot from all the tahor animals. Now, since he was a Baal Mum, because he was bitten by the Aryeh, the lion, he gave it to his sons to go and sacrifice. But nonetheless, sacrifices were made. Hashem went and promised Noah the following. I'm never going to bring another flood like this again. However, there are going to be certain changes to the world. Because of the tranquility and relaxation that existed in this world beforehand, it led the people to sin. As we stated before, the weather was always perfect spring weather. The food would only need to be planted once every 40 years and would grow sky high. Now Hashem said, there's going to be seasons. Weather is going to change. Not every place in the earth is going to have the same weather at the same time. And before the Mabul, the animals weren't subservient to the people. Because the people weren't even on a level to be considered higher than the animals. But now Hashem says to Noah, I'm going to make the animals subservient to you. We see as long as a human being is alive, Animals are frightened of men. And when people get attacked by animals, shows us that there is some area in which a human being has to fix his ways that led the animal that's usually subservient to attack. Noah is now allowed to eat meat, birds, fish, as long as 
There's no ever minachai, removing a limb from a live animal. This last commandment that they're able to eat meat, birds, and fish was very comforting to Noah and his sons because they realize now that the world is going to repopulate and there's nothing to grow from the ground yet. Hashem commands Noah, Peru Urvu, I'm going to give you a beracha though. You have to populate the world now. The world is going to continue from you. The fact that Hashem told Noah Prurbu was very comforting towards his children because even though the food was still growing, there might not have been enough food. And there might have been a reason for one to kill their brother, just like Cain killed Hevel. And then half of the world is gone. In fact, the rabbi here brings up a couple laws of Lo'alenu suicide. A person's supposed to take very good care of their body. It's on loan from Hashem. And sometimes people might be anxious and depressed and might tell themselves, there's no reason for me to go on. However, one has to know they have to take care of themselves. Better times are ahead. For that reason, we say, En Adam, Mesimatz Morasha, person can confess to his own sins in court and be believed because a person might be so down that even he might be fabricating the confession in order to get a death penalty. One who commits suicide, law lenu, soul is traveling and is not accepted anywhere since he died before his time and his fate in Olam Haba as well as his place of burial and ability to eulogize him is in ruins. Hashem told Noah, I'm going to promise you I will never bring another flood and for that, I'm gonna make a rainbow. That any time I wanna bring a flood to the world, this rainbow is gonna show and it will remind me, so to speak, that I promised I will never bring him a bull. One should make sure not to gaze at a rainbow, but to say the proper beracha when he sees it, which is Baruch zochera berit ne'eman bebrito v'kayam b'ma'amaro. After this whole incident, Noah went and planted a vineyard. That was the first thing he planted after leaving the ark. He planted it and the grapes grew that very day. The fact that Noah went and planted a vineyard first out of everything else transformed him from an Ish Sadiq to an Ish Adama, a base name for an individual, a person of the land, because the first thing he planted out of anything was grapes. Those grapes grew that very day and Noah became drunk. Ham, his son, was told by his son, Kenan, that he was drunk in the tent. Ham saw this as a perfect opportunity to prevent what he was afraid of. He said, if more children are born to Noah, they could fight and kill each other. Because of this, Ham didn't want Noah having any more children and he sterilized him. After that, he went to run and tell his brothers about their father's situation in the oil, in the tent. Yefet and Shem quickly came to the tent to cover their father's nakedness, and they walked backwards with cloth to go and cover their father. Shem actually was much more careful not to view his father, and in that merit, he got the mitzvah of tzitzit. In any event, both Shem and Yefet went and covered their father. But Ham, because of his brazen and disgusting behavior, was punished severely for generations to come. Firstly, because he gazed upon his father in his nakedness, his eyes would now be bloodshot. He would have exaggerated lips and kinky hair from the fact that he went to tell his brothers in a laughing matter about his father. 
And finally, his people will always be naked themselves because they will live in terrains and areas of the world that the heat will be so severe that they won't be clothed. Shem, on the other hand, was rewarded with the mitzvot of Sitzit and Tefillin, and whose descendants as well would be saved in the future in that merit, including Hananel, Mishael, and Azariah in the times of Daniel, Aharon's sons when they entered the Kodesh HaKodeshim, and even with Sancherim's army. Yefet would be Zochen and would merit burial. But in any event, Noah realized when he woke up what happened, and he cursed Ham's son, Kena'an. He didn't curse Ham himself with these things because Ham was blessed by Hashem on the Teva. But he cursed his son, Kena'an. Another reason why Noah cursed Kena'an instead of his father, Ham, was a midah keneged midah of what Ham tried to do. Ham sterilized Noah so he wouldn't be able to have another son. Usually in a father's old age when he has a son, he's called the ben zikunim. It's a son who takes care of him. It's a son who is always by his side. Because Ham prevented Noah from having such a child, Noah cursed Ham's youngest child, which was Kenan. After the flood, Noah lived 350 years for a total age of 950 years of life. It was now year 2006 to the creation of the world. Ham had another son named Kush, and Kush had a son named Nimrod. Nimrod was an evil, evil guy, but very talented and cunning. He was able to go and get information out of anybody and to get people to confess and admit to actions that they did, whether knowingly or unknowingly. He seduced people away from Hashem and he was an expert hunter. What these people didn't know is that part of his success in hunting was due to this special coat that he got. Adam Adishon was given a kotnot or, a coat specific to give him a lot of power. He went and Adam passed it on to Metushelach, and Metushelach passed it on to Noah. In where Ham went and stole it from Noah, gave it to his firstborn son Cush who therefore gave it to his first son, Nimrod. Because of this, Nimrod had great strength, and people crowned him king due to his many talents and great strength. Now, Nimrod didn't just suffice and be content with being the king of the world. Until then, the world didn't need a king. Everybody had their societies in peace. Nimrod was the first king who in addition to being as cunning as he was, declared himself God, the all-powerful, denying the existence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, even so much so as claiming that he wasn't born from a human being. Forty years, Nimrod waged war with the children of Yefet and finally declared victory, in which at that point, Nimrod solidified his empire and made the people of Yefet his slaves. Second in command, or rather his right-hand man of Nimrod, was none other than Terach, the father of Abraham. Nimrod eventually ruled the whole world from one end to the other, declaring an absolute monarchy around the globe. Asher, one of the sons of Shem, saw what was going on and decided to leave and build his own cities. He built four cities, Nineveh, Rechovot, Ir, and Kalach. 
And because of that, Hashem rewarded him to build another four cities. Because he built it to separate himself from Nimrod and his ways. Shem also had another son called Arpachshad, who had Shelach, who in turn had Eved. Shem was the ancestor of the Jewish people. Shem would consider his family to be his one brother, Yefet, even though he had Ham, but because of Ham's wickedness, he considered having one brother, Yefet, and his special grandson named Eved. Eved was actually a Navi. He went and he named one of his children Yoktan because of his smallness, his humility, that he made himself katan and humble in front of people. And even though the rabbis tell us that he needed to be humble, he really wasn't all that much that he needed to be humble for. But still, nonetheless, he was humble and teaches us all the more so how much we must practice humility for all the talents Hashem gives us. Who are we to boast? They could come and go from, from us by Hashem's will at any moment. Eved studied Torah with Shem and him and Shem started Yeshiva called Yeshivat Shem Eved. All together, Shem, Ham, and Yefetz, children, formed what today is known as the 70 nations. In fact, if you count all of them, they come out to 74. 15 from Yefet and his sons, 32 from Ham, and 27 from Shem and his sons which gives us 74. However, the four Sadikim, Ever, Shelach, Arpachshad, and Shem are not counted among the 70 in the count, and therefore it's 70 nations. It was now year 1996 from the creation of the world, merely 340 years after the Mabul. And the reason why it's a mere 340 years is because compared to how long people lived in those days, 340 years could have been like 20, 30 years in our time. And yet, these people, called the Dora Haflaga, decided to build a tower to reach Shamaim. They didn't learn the lessons from the flood of how not to mess with Hashem, yet they brazenly pursued their interests and progressed with their plans. It was in the merit, however, that Hashem decided to give them a chance to do Teshuvah, and thus the Gimatria of Shem, which is 340, was the exact 340 years Hashem gave them to do Teshuvah before punishing them. These people came to the conclusion that Hashem only rules the upper world and that the lower world has no importance to him. In fact, we know the opposite to be true. Hashem's hashkacha is apparent on the smallest of creatures. However, they held Hashem only is in charge of the upper realms of the world and anything that happened below was purely the power of the planets and the stars. In order to rebel against God, they said, this is not fair. We're going to build a tower to reach him. Now, there were three reasons, or rather three groups of people that wanted to build the tower for three different reasons. Number one, to fight Hashem. Number two, merely to escape the flood that they thought was going to happen once again, to go up there and just worship Avodah Zarah and stay there. At the time, Abraham was 48 years old, Abraham Avinu. And he would go and tell these people, what are you doing? But they just dismissed him and mocked him. 
and continued on with their plan. They went and baked bricks at an astounding pace to be able to build the highest tower possible. They actually were proficient in laying two bricks at one time. And so many people were working, but that didn't matter for them. If he slipped and fell, they didn't care about the victim. They only cared about how many bricks they would have lost in the process. In any event, they worked perfectly and precisely to go and complete their mission. And that, a large part of that was due to the fact that they all spoke the same language. Communication is key. And that's exactly what these individuals were doing. They weren't scared of punishment because they said, Hashem can't touch us down in the earth below in accordance with their beliefs. They decided that this best place to build the tower was none other where all the corpses of the Mabul were, Shin'ar. Hashem eventually destroyed the tower. But to know how high the tower was, Chazal tell us as follows. The tower was so tall, a third of it sunk into the ground, a third of it was burned, and a third of it stayed. But that third that stayed, if you went on top of just that third, you would see trees would look like mere grasshoppers. In fact, to just walk in the shadow of that building would take three days, which one shouldn't do because it's gorem shechecha, forgetting one's learning. Hashem went down to look what was going on. Vayered Hashem lirot. Hashem didn't need to go down from Shamaim to see what's going on. Obviously, he knew what was going on. But it's to teach us a lesson that as much as you claim to know, you don't know more than Hashem. Hashem saw that the communication was key. And he took his angels and asked them what to do. And they told him, the fact that they're being so successful is their communication. And there Hashem decided to take that away. He went and he made 70 languages. He appointed one angel per nation to oversee that nation. And he made and mixed up these people's languages. Because of this, the people got punished in six ways. One, because they now couldn't understand each other, through their anger, they went and killed each other. Imagine if somebody tells his friend to bring up bricks and he takes time to bring it up to the top of the tower only to think that that individual wanted something else. In his anger, he would kill his friend. Other people perished by the oceans coming and sweeping people away. Other families tried to escape, but the mountains came and blocked them and the earth swallowed them. Some were transformed into apes, monkeys, spirits, and demons. And these people did not get Olam Haba. After this incident, all the nations were scattered into different places, different than where they originally came from, except for Mitzrayim that stayed in his place. He was returned to his land. There were now seven generations between Noah and Abraham. But in any event, Noah knew Abraham. They conversed. In fact, Noah told Abraham the story firsthand about Adam Arishon and the flood. Shem ended up telling Abraham's sons Yitzchak and Yaakov about the flood. We have a direct misora from the beginning of time of all these events.